What's up, YouTube? This is Russell from Russell 3 coming to you with episode 17 of the Waterbox 70.3 build. In this episode, I want to go over what happened with my alkalinity. Um, I spiked it up on accident and it ended up bleaching a few of my SPS. So I just want to kind of go over what happened and the steps I'm taking to ensure that I don't lose any corals. Um, thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look. So I just want to go over what's been happening with the tank over the last couple weeks. Um, basically, what has happened is a small bleaching event in my tank. Um, I have bleached out a couple Monty caps and all of my corals look uh, not so great. I mean, a couple of them weren't affected, but any Montes, my Monty caps, my Digitata, my Satosa, and also a couple of my acros look uh, pretty bad. So what had happened was, as you guys know, I switched over from using calc to using two part. Um, when I did that, that's kind of a destabilizing event in itself for the tank. So you always expect some, some bad things to happen whenever you make any changes to the system. So I was expecting that. Um, but what happened next was definitely 100% my fault. So as I switched over to the auto dosing system and away from Calicwasser, I kind of wanted to elevate my alkalinity. It was sitting at around 8.3 and I wanted to bring it up around nine. Um, so that is basically what I did. I was dosing and it kept rising and rising, um, not too quickly. It was over about probably a week, week and a half. Um, and it went to eight, then ended up at nine. And that's when I started having some issues. So as you can see that Monte cap, I don't think this video really does it justice. Um, in real life, it is pretty much all white and has a little bit of brown algae growing all around it. So what had happened is I raised my alkalinity up to nine, which isn't very high, but I also started to go kind of ultra low nutrients in the system. Um, what had happened is my freezer broke. So I ran out of all of my frozen food, all my mysis, which is generally the only thing I feed. So I went to dry food and was feeding much less than I normally do. Um, so that kind of nutrient starved the system and that along with the large rays and alkalinity from staying steady at 8.3 to staying around 9.1 cause a small bleaching event in the system. Um, like I said, this was totally my fault and I know exactly what happened. So I know exactly how it happened. I know why it happened. So that's always good. Whenever you have events in your system to be able to identify why it happened so we can do better next time. So um, what I did to fix it was- The first thing uh, was to take out the small amount of GFO that I had in the system. So I wanted to make sure that there were nitrates and phosphates available for the SPS to uptake because it's clear that they were starving out in my opinion. Um, so I immediately took out the GFO. Um, I didn't really think that the GFO was doing much, but if you look at my tank over the last, I would say month, you notice all the algae is pretty much gone. So that's a good indication that your system is beginning to come nutrient starved. So I took out the GFO and then I immediately started feeding um, a little bit of refroids and amino acids along with heavy feedings of mysis shrimp. Um, it's just really unfortunate what happened with my freezer situation. Um, my freezer has crapped out two times in the last month. So as a family, we've been out without a freezer for, or fridge for about two weeks out of the month. So I was basically just feeding dry food, which definitely had a, a pretty poor effect on my system. Um, on top of feeding more and eliminating the GFO, 
I also uh, lowered my alkalinity and calcium additives on the auto doser. So I was dosing about 15 mLs. I dropped that down to four mLs until I got to an alkalinity of 8.3. And now that I'm at 8.3, I'm slowly upping it, just trying to keep it steady at 8.3. So now I'm about seven, I'll, I'll test it every day and then just try to get in that range. Um, probably end up dosing, I don't know, 12 mLs of two part a day to keep going and then we'll go from there. Um, but that's one thing that happens when you have one of these events. Um, so you're dosing more alkalinity, you have a high alk, and then corals start bleaching out. And then I would say that Monty cap is probably my biggest consumer of alkalinity and calcium because it's the biggest piece and grows the fastest. And since that is kind of dying off, then that's even less consumption of elk. And then your elk keeps going up and up and up and up. So it's just something to keep an eye on. Um, definitely next time, if I had, if I could do it over again, I would have um, probably not tried to raise the alkalinity at all. Just kept it at 8.3 because really I was getting good results and there was no reason to really change it. I just kind of liked that number nine and thought that everything would be fine there. But for my system, in order to maintain an alk of nine, I have to be feeding very heavy for my SPS to like it. So just something to keep in mind, I guess. Uh, one big positive to take out of this whole situation is when you're keeping a, a reef tank, it's really important to identify kind of your canary in the coal mine. Um, just identify those pieces that are affected first by any change in water chemistry. So for me in my tank, that has definitely been the uh, Montipora caps. Uh, so in the future, I know if they start kind of fading out to to look at nutrient levels, look at water chemistry, look at all that because they'll be the first indication that something is awry in the system. So that's one good thing. Um, another good thing is I still haven't lost any pieces. Um, I have a feeling that the large Monty cap is gonna lose about, I'll probably lose about half of it, but it won't make a difference, it grows really fast. And then my Acroporas, I got a little bit of STN around a couple of the bases and a little bit of burnt tips on a couple, but nothing major. So I'm hoping everything recovers. Um, so that's definitely good news. I think it's pretty amazing that for my system, I haven't, I've only lost one SPS frag since I've had it. And I added SPS really early. Um, and everything has been living, knock on wood. Um, nothing is really thriving yet, but everything's keeping its color and encrusting. Nothing's growing super fast, but everything looks good, so can't really complain. So just to wrap it up, I think uh, the major takeaway from this whole issue that I encountered is we need to remember that SPS need food, they need nutrients. Um, sometimes we forget that because they don't have the active feeding response like other LPS, but they really need food. So in the future, I'm just gonna try to keep an eye out on a polyp extension and like the feeding response that you do get, just keeping an eye on that. And then just be cognizant of like, just knowing that they need food to grow. So. If I don't see algae growing in the tank, probably I'm gonna have issues with the SPS and that's exactly what happened. So yeah, I think that's all I got for you guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll catch you next time.